Lower. Okay. Hello. How do I see who's here? I don't know. I don't know. They hey. must be here, because we're here. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yay! Yay! Hi, everyone. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So many people are joining. Welcome, welcome. Hi, guys. Okay. I feel... Hi! Oh, look at the waves. Hi, everyone. Okay. Thanks for coming. Um, we'll get started. I'm Lauren. If you don't know me, welcome. This is Marla. Hi, guys. Um, and I am going to let her talk about exactly like all of her credentials because there's a lot of them. Um, and then we'll get to it. Yes. Can't wait. Hey, everyone. Well, switch. Really quick. I switch our social distancing. Switching. <laughs> yes, we have to maintain that. I'm Marla, and I do fitness for women from teenagers to seniors and have trained in so many ways in licensing and certification to work with mamas after they've had a child so that you can correct the diastasis recti, which I'm about to tell you about in about two seconds. So if you've just joined, we are going to need a mat if you want to try it out or a notebook if you want to take notes. And I'm going to use Amazing Lauren as my example for all of you on how to make all of this work. So let's get started. Great. Okay. But first I want to talk about just really quickly how Marla and I met. Um, Marla is amazing and the way, okay, so I had Isaac um, 10 months ago and I didn't even know diastasis recti what existed and I went to the doctor when I was like eight to 10 weeks postpartum and I was like, I feel like my uterus didn't fully go back to the way it was because I still feel, it's like an organ, it's not fat, it's like an actual organ that's sticking out and she just felt it and she was like, oh, that's your, stomach that's not your uterus so then that was all she said and then I was like okay so I need to go on a diet and then I was like trying to google how to diet to shrink your stomach I don't I didn't want to I mean I wanted to lose fat but that wasn't the goal and so I wanted so I was googling and I was talking to my friends being like how does one shrink a stomach and they were like no 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 you can't shrink your stomach you gotta put it back in your body you have diastasis recti so then I did it I spoke to Marla about it um, she told me how to check. She told me what to do, what not to do, which everything is going that we're going to tell you. Um, and honestly, like it's not a hundred percent. I'm not going to tell you it is. It's not a hundred percent, but it's like a thousand times better. Um, and like I don't feel like it's sticking out anymore. Like it's definitely more contained in my body. So. Without further ado, Marla Vin talks. So before I tell you exactly what you need to know, very quickly, just so you know your abdominals, because I feel like as women we don't even know that as a starting point. So there are four sections of your abdominals, and your core is actually starts right above your belly button and goes very to the actual bottom of your backside. That's how comprehensive that area of your body is. So the rectus abdominis, the top portion, as um, you go through pregnancy, the abdominal walls open naturally to make room for your growing beautiful uterus, and those air, that area actually starts to break down a little bit. So the body is an amazing healing mechanism that postpartum, within six to eight weeks, that area fuses back together through a number of ways, um, scientifically, that I will, um, I will actually, um, we're not gonna worry about that right now. Um, but what you do need to know are the steps to take if your doctor or you notice a cone forming at that area at the top of your belly. And there's, and you'll start to feel it. Some women don't even realize it until many years later. So this is seed planting, whether whatever stage you're at, or if you're many years later, there's still efforts you can make to correct that space. And then you could start working your transverse abdominis, your lower abdominals, your internal obliques, your external obliques, and your back. I even include the latimus dorsi, your back, as part of this equation. Before we do anything, Lauren, follow along. We're going to think about what it means to engage your core. So I want you to move your shoulders away from your ears. Kind of soften your knees and bring your pelvis inward, tucking your navel back to spine. And I always try to use this command, this cue, is how would you react if I went to go punch you in the stomach? You would push your abdominal walls almost as a protective response. So ready? A tuck in, a rounding of your spine, and tucking. A lot of people think in contracting your core, if you hear it in an exercise class, is that you actually push out. That's 
counterproductive. This is actually turning inward and drawing navel back to spine. Amazing, right? Okay, now that you understand what it means to contract your core and you understand where your core is, only then can we know how to identify if you have a diastasis. So I think it's also important yes, go. to note it's not sucking in. You're not sucking in your, from how what I, like in order to know the difference of whether I'm sucking in or I'm not sucking in, I feel like I contract and if it's a little hard for me to breathe, like I'm kind of like, like a, li a little bit, then I feel like I'm doing it right as opposed right. to like sucking in, which is I do 24 seven, I can go about my day and breathe normally. Right. Um, yeah. Another cue also to think if the, the punching in the belly is not the best command is zipping your navel back to spine. Almost like you're pulling back without sucking, that you're pushing through those walls and creating some like tension that doesn't tighten everything else up around you. So it's with those knees to full body effort. So if that's too, too much information, now I'm going to give you more with Lauren as my guide. So okay. we're gonna get down on the mat and I hope you'll join us. Can you see that? We're staring at a ring light, so we're a little blind. <laughs> so Can if you go lay down, I'll tell you if we're good to go. All right, all done. Hello, everybody. I'm gonna try and lower it a little bit because I'm like white. Okay. All right. It is what it is. All right. Lay so. <laughs> okay. So, two fingers are basically the, the equal to almost two centimeters, which would actually signify that there's a diastasis. So you take those two centimeters horizontally and you press them as you come upward. And I don't know if they see you, Lauren, but and we're gonna certainly... Me? Yeah, no, I think now we see you. Now you see Okay. It's <laughs> so like, now you see me, now you don't. So what I'll I command, well, so you basically take those two centimeters, you put them in the belly, you pull your chin into your chest and lift your shoulder blades up off the floor and then you push those so you're going to come up a little bit oh my gosh you're like so corrected wow Am see what ever makes yes she only has a little less than one fingertip whereas typically if you qualify as someone with diastasis it's two side by side fingertips in the region right between your kind of rib cage right and so, that's so interesting because i thought you were supposed to check by like your belly. You button. start here when you're just getting started. Right oh, here. Interesting. Like right, yeah, exactly. So the belly button is like the transverse sentence. That would be broken apart, but this is where you start at the rectus of that. Gotcha. Yeah. So now that you, whether you have it or not, I'm actually going to tell you, I just want to make sure we could see Lauren. Come up a little bit, Lauren. <laughs> oh yeah, I see her now. There um, okay. <laughs> so let's start in the table now so they can for okay. sure see you. I thank you so much. Okay. So zip is it. <laughs> um, so here are the following exercises that you can take every day, about 10 to 12 repetitions, um, twice a day ideally, to start on your way to repairing the diastasis. I forgot to say about the wrap. Should we say oh, that now? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because that's your starting point. Yeah. Tell so them a little bit about Marla that. Marla actually suggested that I get this. It's a wrap. I don't know what it's called. A wrap. It's, it's a postpartum wrap. You could look here. on any postpartum baby website, and I'm sure Lauren could post the link. Yeah, if you, if guys you want need. a link to this one, I was very happy with it. It basically, when you work out, it's like a corset almost, um, and you can like tighten it. And then I comes with like a strap here, and then it kind of forces you when you're working out to contract your muscles. And I use this for months, maybe three or four months every time I work yeah. out. That's, that's a great starting point as you embark on the necessary efforts to make in correcting the area that we're actively about to start working. And again, take your notebook and write these down and we'll try and share them thereafter. So, do we need to say hi to anyone? A waist trainer. Waist <laughs> trainer. Yes. Yay, a waist trainer. That's a what A waist it's trainer. Also, I think it might be like a corset. Yes, thank you. Waist trainer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Now we recall. Um, okay, so we're gonna get into our tabletop position. Your knees are gonna be underneath your hip bones. No direct pressure on your patella, your kneecaps. You wanna put your body weight underneath the kneecap. I'm gonna lower the camera just oh, cool. a little, so that way they well, can see while me. While Lauren lowers the camera, 
just so you know, you're all on your tabletop with a flat back and you are going go. to um, make sure that pressure is underneath your knees, under your hip bones, and your palms are under your shoulder line, kind of gripping your mat with your thumb and your pinky, so to remove any direct pressure on your wrist, because we want to be good to those joints at every point of our fitness journey. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Yeah. So. Lauren is in a tabletop position, and one of your first starting points that you want to take is to do an actual pelvic tilt, is to round your pelvis, draw your navel back to spine. If you want to give some neck release, it's just an added benefit, so draw your chin into chest. So as you pull and you zip that navel back to spine, you're going to feel those first level of tucking, of pulling those abdominal muscles in tight, because, and now you could drop your belly and arch the small of your back, give yourself a release. I'm gonna add, give you an add-on. Added Kegel exercise, which is the tightening of those vaginal walls, which is very important also for postpartum health because that prevents incontinence and issues later on with your pelvic floor. So again, round, let's start squeezing inward, draw your navel back to spine, and release. Doing these exercises is strengthening from the inside out, and that is the vehicle to correcting the diastasis. Are you ready for some more? I'm ready. Okay, you're still in tabletop. Still Does in that tabletop. Mean? No, but can I don't? We didn't talk about this. But <laughs> okay. what I did, I did that for me. I felt like that. I felt the tightening the most. That was my favorite. But what I did at a certain point was I let my kids sit on my back oh, for weight. Oh, weight training. When, so when I felt like it wasn't doing a good enough job. Um, I had them sit on my back. I think they're like 50 pounds total. Wow. So, okay. Certain, and they loved it. So that's a good layer. You know, obviously with adequate distribution of weight and supervision so that you can keep your back safe, but that's actually some great part of like resistance training in your effort to correct. So good call. Thank Way you. to mommy it up. Okay. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Now we're going to do a balancing tabletop with an internal strengthening exercise. This no crunches. You cannot do crunches when you do a diastasis. Be, when you do the diastasis recti exercises to correct it because it's too hard in the body and you're pulling those muscles away from each other. This is the opposite. Right arm, left leg, extend yeah. from the body. You want to do a flat back. You want to keep your pelvis neutral and that left hip turned down. See that? She's perfect alignment, straight spine. Can you tap your right fingertips to your left knee, rounding your spine like we did previously? So you yeah. kind of round and tuck. Bring right arm to, ah, oh, there it is, and extend back. Inhale, exhale, extend. What's happening here, guys, is she's doing like crunches, for, cr bringing those muscles back in together. And just back and forth, back and forth. I would suggest you do about five to 10 as you build strength on each side every day. You can't overtrain this unless you start getting wild with adding weights. I'm not asking that of you. You wanna do the other side so you don't walk out of here crooked and so that they <laughs> sure. can try it at home? Good, left arm, right leg, bring it on in, fingertips. You also get to see here if you're stronger on one side than another, core-wise. Give me one more, amazing. Hey, you know what you can do while you're here that I'll show you that I'm not gonna let Lauren because she's still on the journey of correction, is you should never do cobras or upward facing dogs if you're a yoga junkie. If you think about oh, it, that opens those muscles. They need to keep coming inward and locking back in. So it's critical that you do not do that. Okay, are you ready for okay. some more? I'm ready. On your back, girlfriend. On my back. <laughs> okay, so remember I said no crunches? What I want you to do is to plant your feet firmly into the floor. Good, and now I want you to kind of, as you pull your glutes up into a glute bridge, I want you to kind of tilt your pelvis just like we did on our knees, but it's gonna be a little harder because you have to start engaging your quads. Do you know when you engage your quads, the top of your legs, you're suddenly activating the lower part of your abdominals. And do you feel that kind of tuck inward? Yep. Okay. <laughs> She's like, and affirmative. <laughs> okay, now about, touch back down, knees in the air. Don't wave them like you just don't care because we want to be careful here. I'm gonna show from the side. Okay, <laughs> it's like the right angle. Is with your head down because we want to always keep that head down. If you do those crunches, it impedes on the the tightening of the top, that rectus abdominis. So with your knees hip width apart so that you keep your pelvis aligned, I want you to slowly drop left, up oh, and right. up again, and right. Using your hands to press firmly on your midsection to make sure it stays locked. You're like, I feel it. Okay, do you guys out there see her legs dropping one and the other? 
But you know what you can't do? Lauren, do you remember what you can't do at this position? Both of them at the same time. Yes! A plus for this lady! You cannot drop them at the same time because that can cause serious um, issues in terms of separation. And what's our goal? Together. <laughs> yes. Keep together. Amazing. Okay. Ooh. Can I teach you some standing, Abba, first? Of course. Okay. <laughs> This will be our last one, so I hope you guys are getting a lot out of this. Um, okay, so do you remember us talking about like when you're in like the bathroom, like brushing your teeth? Yes, I was gonna bring that up if you weren't going to. <laughs> Go for it. Tell me what your recall is. Okay, so Marla was talking to me about just like kind of just like tucking and tightening, and then just like thrusting <laughs> and just doing pumping the air, just because. pumping the air. And she's like, it's the greatest thing to do just while you're brushing your teeth. Just like brush your teeth and just <laughs> just hump the air. And so that's what I do. Right. Um, that's so funny that you were going to mention that. We did not talk about that now, but I was no going to bring that up. <laughs> exactly. No pre-planning Wednesday. So, you know, the whole effort here and the agenda is to repair something your body naturally and in the most beautiful way did for the sake of birth. But just like it took 10 months for that development, you gotta give yourself time. But consistency, not intensity, pays. By doing the exercises that we just shared with you regularly, you'll be on your path to correcting the space that has broken down from the best effort you could have made. And it also gets your, your free baby body back because as you tighten the core, once you correct that diastasis, then you can start moving into so many other exercises. Should we talk about, before we close, what you can't do also? Yes, Listen. yes, because there's a lot of exercise. I remember being very nervous to exercise because there's a lot of things you can't do, and I was very nervous that I'd actually accidentally do one, okay. and so I was just like, nope, I'm not gonna work out. Um, but yes. So it's the dropped legs that we showed you, it's the crunches, and here's one that a lot of women don't know and often trip up, twists. You know those Russian twists where you twist side to side? Or if you're an avid yoga enthusiast and you're sitting down and you do those torso twists, that could actually disrupt the entire effort that you're making in doing these exercises. No twists, no leg drops from the top, and no crunches until you have clearance from a PT or a personal trainer well-versed in this specific matter in order to help you with this journey. That's some of it, right? Yeah, that was good. Um, what else did I want to say? Wall planking is good too. Before you do planking. real deal planks, which you may not be ready for, even though side planks actually can be very effective as part of this um, regimen, um, you can also do wall planks where you press your palms up against the wall, turn your pelvis in like Lauren beautifully demonstrated, and just start to open up your chest and start to feel that upper body build too because sometimes the symmetry in your muscles gets compromise as you're holding a baby on one side. Um, what about, and this is good because I get to ask Marla now all of my questions, what about um, mountain climber? Mountain climbers. So I'm a big fan of the mountain climber because... I see people writing. Keep talking. I see oh, people yeah. writing. Because what ends up happening is you get so much cardiovascular boost. You get a fat burn. You get that endorphin rush. Mountain climbers are a commonly misused exercise. You, the arms are away from the shoulder line, they're supposed to be directly underneath, and people move their knees so fast that they actually don't contract their core. They're being too ballistic with the movement. So what you wanna do is start slow, so you seal in that positive form, draw navel to spine as each knee comes in. Do you wanna demonstrate because we've gotten so good at showing your awesomeness? Sure. <laughs> okay, what? so can you get into a plank for me? Palms under your shoulders. Feet hip width apart. Like a this plank? I'd rather you do palm plank for the sake of mountain climbers, if that's okay. okay. Yes, that makes sense. Okay, so she's perfectly flat on the back. Her form's great. Maybe tilt your pelvis in a tad, please. There it is. Now, slowly draw right, right knee to your midsection and return it to the floor. Left. Okay, I'd like you to start moving faster without jumping. Right, left. Maybe start rounding your back and having your heart meet that knee as you go. Keep going. There, good. It's all in the subtle moves that matter. Okay, how does that feel? It's good. It's funny because I was talking to somebody about this and she's probably here, hi Kelly. You told me you were watching, I haven't looked, but we were talking about it and she said it's really hard that when you're correcting, you're not sweating. Um, 
which I felt also. I felt I had a really hard time. Like, it, it wasn't working because I wasn't sweating. Um, but I'm sweating now. So <laughs> these, are, these are really good moves if you want to feel like you're getting a, like a cardio workout as opposed to like a corrective workout, which I'm sure Marley can explain more about. Right. Um, but this was good. It's good. I nice. forgot your original question. The but. sweat the sweat question is a, is a big one. So I'll just briefly speak to that. There's a misconception in the physical exercise world that sweat signifies the intensity of a workout and is somehow, somehow a validation. First of all, everyone has different um, activity levels with their sweat glands, compounded with the notion that different exercises do different things for the body. So your body is working hard, it does produce sweat, your heart rate elevates in that process, but sometimes we just don't sweat and corrective exercises slash functional fitness helps teach you how to use your body in day-to-day -day activities is just as important as breaking a sweat and getting that crazy heart beating, falling on the floor workout. They all matter and no exercise is created equally. They all have different values on the body and just is a call to action for you to try them. Okay, good. <laughs> I see some, uh, there were questions coming in, and we got questions before. Ooh, there's so yeah. many questions. I hope this is helpful for you guys. Knowledge is power, so the more oh, we good. know, oh, the yes. more we can do to impact our overall body health. Okay, so sweating was one question, and then the, another question was, like, how long should you be doing this for? Like, when do you feel? You told me, like, a certain amount of weeks. I don't remember what yeah. you said. <laughs> so, um... You know, everybody conditions differently just in the same answer as the sweating question. We all have our own unique bodies. So I always say rule of thumb is to employ these exercises we discussed, obviously with proper form. Um, I'm happy to answer questions at any point if you want to hit me up at salad underscore strong um, to tell you how to do them. But you want to try and do them for regularly. We're talking three to five days a week, every day if you can fit it in, maybe even just a couple minutes a day. It's cumulative, so it all goes in the right direction. Aim for six to eight weeks. Ah. Patience is everything when it comes oh to your gentle body <laughs> and getting to where you want it to be. Um, so give yourself six to eight weeks, and then maybe you need to kick it up a notch. Add more repetitions. Introduce yet another one of those exercises. Maybe you start with three that we discussed tonight, and you add a couple more over time. So that's the answer to the long answer to your short question, Lauren. Um, ah, I keep you're very good because I'm doing something very distracting here, and you totally ignored it. Okay, <laughs> Ellie asked, "Do you constantly need to keep this up once it's corrected?" Um, good question. So here's the thing: once it's corrected and you've moved from like that, you know how you qualify as someone with diastasis with two um, fingers or two, it's technically 2.7 centimeters space or more. Um, but once you get down to one finger or under, you're essentially in like safe zone, meaning you're in a place where you could start trying things that were previously prohibited. But I tell all my ladies who have ch had this challenge to keep doing the exercises they've grown to know and I hope love in this process because muscle memory. It will remind those muscles to keep staying connected, especially if weight gain or a second child comes down the road and that area gets challenged a little bit again. Right, so I got this with Isaac, but I'm so curious. I didn't even know it existed with Ethan and Kayla, and I'm just curious. To know you most likely Ethan. had it with one or one or maybe, usually it's not as common statistically with first timers. multi -paris women are, or more than having you know, one baby, two or more, um, is when you start to fall in that um, risk factor of it happening, or right. more likely to happen. It's so interesting. Okay, and my other thought, oh, I thought about something about the sweating, that a lot of the times I would do a workout and then just add it to my workout, like afterwards. So yeah. I would go, I would get that sweat in, get that cardio, and then I'll be like, okay, I'm done. It was kind of like my, I considered it my cool down, even though like it's not a cool down where I would just sit and work on that, knowing that, okay, like, I got it, and I did my, like, official workout for my diastasis recti. Okay, Jenny asks, what about if my kids are teens? Is it too late? Um, so here's, it's such a great question. Um, okay. It's not too late. You can make the effort. However, if you are seeing a significant two-finger space in the area we discussed, and 
when you're laying down, you come up a little bit, you start to see a cone forming in that region where your rectus abdominis meets your transverse abdominis, then, and you're also maybe experiencing a little pain and discomfort, my recommendation is to see a physical therapist and either get a CAT scan or an ultrasound to understand the depth of that damage because that might require, depending on how it impedes on your body, some corrective surgery. Um, it also is sometimes linked later on to umbilical hernias. I hate to give you the yuck, but just as a you know mindfulness effort, it's good to still check in and find out if you need to do secondary effort medically. Um, okay, are there any more questions? Those are all the questions that we had. Um, yes, yeah, 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 add. One last thought. Um, we have an opportunity as mommies to be role models. And so some people say, I can't fit it in. Or like Lauren just said, she adds it to her existing workout. Try to do a life hack of making it fun. Like, see if you can push mommy down when her feet are coming up. Like, make it almost like a game so it becomes something that not only your kids seeing you invest in your health, which is has later implications, but also for them to help hold you accountable. That's another little hack along the way. That's awesome. Oh, okay. Ellie says, if you see the cone while you're doing a plank, does that mean for sure that you have it? Um, Hashtag twins. <laughs> I, I added that. I, I find that sometimes with um, having multiples in one pregnancy, having twins or triplets or beyond, um, or having had C-sections, that cone will sometimes just happen, um, which could be actual extra skin, more than actually the area that we've been talking about this entire session. So um, maybe meet with a personal trainer or your friend who's a personal trainer, <laughs> Ellie, um, to yeah. um, identify if it is in fact excess skin um, that is just more kind of being a little um, slack when you're in your plank form or the diastasis, but you won't actually usually see the diastasis um, to, in a cone-like form in plank form. Does that make sense? Did I, explain that one? I think, yeah, okay. that makes sense. Right, I think you would see the cone if you're doing like, a, right, like a cruncher, right, a push-up. Correct. Oh, not a push-up. Uh, a a sit-up. A or sit-up, sit up. yeah, sit up. totally. Which I actually try to discourage. What you should do in lieu of crunches, if those are your jam, is to do a C-curve, where you sit your, your backside on the mat, you heels into the floor, and you round, and you create a C in your thoracic region. So your body really looks at the top like a C, and you're tucking your navel back to spine. It's like a force crunch, but in the safest way. Awesome. Thanks, Ellie. Okay, um, does one wear the belly band all the time, or just like when nursing, or when, or just when exercising? Postpartum, the recommendation of a lot of prenatal and postpartum fitness instructors to actually wear the bands. Um, I used to always call it a wrap because they also make like wraps where they wrap it around you and fit it to your specific body. Um, you should actually, if you know your doctor permits, of course, um, wear the wrap postpartum from you know the week you come back from the hospital till you know four to six weeks after and then with your physician your OBGYN um, ask her him if you are how you're doing in that region because enough women don't ask that question and many doctors are not proficient in having that dialogue with women it's becoming more popular but it's still not a well-spoken conversation like it should be <laughs> right also for me at least I had I'm gonna sit up a little bit because it's hurting my knees um I had uh like a corset that I had used postpartum that because I felt like I was just like after I gave birth like I, my body was just a mess and it was more like I wore it 24 7 like to sleep all the time not this this I only used to work out and then I had probably for like a couple of weeks one that I wore all the time um just for support because I like really needed that which makes sense that I had like an, a diastasis recti issue. It's all coming together now. <laughs> that makes we sense. learned so much about ourselves <laughs> in this journey. <laughs> um, okay, any more questions? Feel free to DM me. You can DM Marla, because I've been tagging her in everything. Oh, also, I wanna let you know, Marla has, if you do wanna start working out, not just diastasis recti, but an overall workout, Marla has a 2020 challenge starting 
November 2nd. November 2nd. Yay. Monday? It's Monday. Monday. Fresh. So 2020, do you want to explain it? Yeah. Okay, you go. If you want me to. I mean, go for it. It's your thing. You're so sweet. It's amazing. Um, so like 2020 stinks, right? And we were in a, we are still in a pandemic and a lot of gyms are closed and we're forced indoors and my personal fitness studio is closed. So I came up with this notion that us women are busy and we only need 20, to, 20 minutes to really develop our strength, our cardiovascular endurance and beyond. So I created a concept of 20 minutes for 20 days challenge with Saturday breaks and only $20. And we've had over a thousand women doing this program. Um, it started out local. It's hopefully gonna get bigger because it's a great way for women and it's an accountability group. It's only 20 bucks. It's so fun. It's and totally worth it. Different fitness formats every day. Right, every day is a different type of workout. And I, you also do like cardio, strength, cardio, strength. Yeah, every day you get five different options. So it's cardio, five. strength, Pilates, yoga, and cardio dance. So you can get your <laughs> groove on. Um, yes, 2020, 2020 challenge is awesome. I really love it. Um, okay, thanks guys for coming. Thank you. I don't know how to end it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, all right.